Barack Obama was president of the United States. He was fantastic. Wasn't he so fantastic and great? He tried to ban a legal tax evasion strategy. No, he's not president. He's using that exact legal tax evading strategy. So is Barack Obama a great president or is Barack Obama the same as everyone else? Just corrupt. <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million Awakening Wonders. Thank you for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom. That will require critical thinking and the ability to look at representatives of both parties and to declare openly and plainly that systemic corruption is exactly that. All pervasive, totally immersive and apparently unavoidable. Whether your hero is Donald Trump or Barack Obama, we've got a story for you that points out that they were totally corrupt, cannot be relied upon because of the way the system operates. Today, it's Barack Obama. Turn on the notification bell if that tickles your fancy. We do stories like this every day over on Rumble. It's an hour-long fantastic and fun show. Barack Obama was seen as a great hope for many people, someone that could genuinely change the political conversation that was a brilliant speaker and a charismatic man. Of course, the 2008 bank bailout smeared that reputation somewhat, as did the droning of Syrian children. But now that he's not president, now that he's an elder statesman advocating for Joe Biden, that guy, let me know in the comments what you think of him, it's disappointing, isn't it, to learn that a legal tax evading strategy that he railed against while president is being exploited now, probably because he's actually so poor and he's, oh no, he's a multi-millionaire, isn't he? Let's have a look at this. As Americans, we don't mind paying our fair share of taxes as long as everybody else does too. Do we? Yeah, we do. But for far too long, lobbyists have rigged the tax code with loopholes that let some corporations pay nothing. I got to, he won't be saying that in a couple of years when he's not president. And indeed, he's not saying that in a couple of years. They've riddled it with giveaways that the super rich don't need, while denying a break to middle class families who do. Joe Biden there just thinking, soon it'll be my turn and possibly earning a few quid on the side. Who's to say what happened when he was vice president? Let me know in the comments. Let's close loopholes. So we stop rewarding. Oh, Joe Biden, no, not the loopholes, you idiot. Hunter! Companies that keep profits abroad and reward those that invest here in America. Everyone knows what to say, don't they? Everyone knows the things that you're supposed to say, but no one actually does them. Yes, let's all clap this. We're not really shutting those loopholes though, are we? Of course we're not. He's not gonna be president in a couple of years. He'll be using those loopholes. Oh, phew. Let's use those savings to rebuild our infrastructure and to make it more attractive for companies to bring jobs home. Yeah, this is all such great stuff. It's not just bullshit though, is it? Let's simplify the system and let a small business owner file based on her actual bank statement. Oh, her, oh, this is good. You're not gonna in a few years just be exploiting those loopholes, not after you said her. <laughs> That's some of those weathered guys. Come on! I saw Reagan say that. I saw Nixon say that. I saw Jimmy Carter say that. Nobody actually does it. We can use that money to help more families pay for childcare and send their kids to college. We need a tax code that truly helps working Americans trying to get a leg up in the new economy. I mean, everything you're saying, that's all sort of fantastic, but it might as well be theater. When you look at it, actually, it is there, isn't it? People standing up and clapping, the flag hanging up there, career politicians just sat around, everyone saying the stuff that they know they're supposed to say, everyone knowing that they're not gonna actually do anything about it. It's become more and more meta, because in that one, Barack Obama's actually defining the situation. I mean, you know, I'm sick and tired of, like, presidents saying this stuff, and then when they retire from office, going on to exploit those loopholes and give speeches, where they earn millions of dollars. Because of the way the world is now, you sort of could see it all happen in real time. I sometimes think that the reason we've got this mad old Joe Biden version of the president now is that no one can be bothered to even emotionally invest in, oh, there's a woman one, oh, there's one that's a different color, oh, there's one, like, like, just give us an old white one that's totally full of shit and just bring out another one in four years. And we can achieve that together. Do we clap yet or already? We still, we're, not, we're still not shutting the loopholes up. No, no! Helping hardworking families make ends meet. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. Us, Raytheon, Wall Street, Lockheed Martin, the quantity of easing bill, all of it. Just the old hard work. What do you want me to say again? Is it hard working? Why don't you just sing a song? Giving them the tools they need for good paying jobs in this new economy. 
maintaining the conditions of growth. Oh, shut up, I can't do this anymore. This okay, this is uh, from Lee Fang's Substack. Barack Obama campaigned extensively during his presidency to eliminate the carried interest loophole, a tax strategy that allows billionaire investors to evade ordinary income taxes. Yeah, he was, just giving a brilliant speech about it. American families, hard working, common decency, you heard it all before. Hedge funds and other private fund managers use this tax treatment to pay long-term capital gains of 20%, a rate that is almost half of what many working Americans pay. Obama, while in office, said this loophole leads to folks who are doing very well paying lower rates than their secretaries. However, since leaving the presidency, Obama has employed a similar tax strategy to potentially only pay capital gains tax for the services he's provided to private business interests. One example of this is Obama's strategic partnership with NBA Africa, which was announced in 2021 as part of an expansion of Africa's largest men's basketball league. The deal is structured as a profit interest share. Now, what this is, is ordinary business practice. What this exposes is that the rhetoric while in office is absolutely empty and hollow. It's not particularly egregious that Barack Obama is doing this. It's standard. It's normal. Everybody does it. What's egregious is that in office they say that and out of office they do this because everything that takes place in office is a kind of spectacle. It's theatre. It's just something that people are saying. If you were able to have said to young Barack Obama, they'd look, are you sure about this? Because like when you leave, you're going to be like a businessman. You're going to actually need this stuff. You know, like, well, I don't think I need to worry because this stuff will never actually happen. So what you are left with is the incontrovertible conclusion that politics is a media spectacle. It's not actually going to do anything. And that is the main message we're trying to transmit to you. That is not the way to improve your life. Participate in it by voting on it, talk about it, preferring one of them over another one, hoping that this one will do better than that one. Look, you see, behind that one talking then is the one that you've got now. He'll be doing his version of this. He's so bloody old, he's not really going to have time to cash in, is he, afterwards? But maybe his kids will. Now! We have to find ourselves not using profitable tax loopholes because we just can't afford the accountants. So we have decided to accept this commercial from these partners of ours and make it funny. If you like this product, why not use it? There's a link offering you a discount, I bet, in the description. Is it me or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain? Wars, pandemics, lies, trickery. My cats keep having kittens. The last one's personal. For those who are in the United States, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg. American Hartford Gold make it easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside a qualifying retirement account like your IRA or 401k. American Hartford Gold is the highest rated firm in the US with an a rating from the BBB and thousands of satisfied clients. Right now, they will give you up to $5,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. This offer is only for US customers. Call 866 505 8315. That's 866 505 8315. Or simply text BRAND to 99 88 99. Get up to $5,000 of silver and protect your future in this crazy, crazy world with some solid, precious metals literally made in stars. The favourable tax treatment of money earned through a profit interest arrangement resembles the carried interest loophole which hedge funds and private equity executives used to pay a capital gains tax rate on multi-million dollar compensation packages that is often lower than the rate paid by middle class workers earning salaries. How outrageous that people can be persuaded to spend their time criticising and condemning other people in the same economic class as them in favour of lobbying for, ideologically at least, the interests of elites on either party party who ultimately, as we have now seen, will do nothing, 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 because I don't think Trump did anything about this either, close the loopholes that they benefit from when their allegiance to their economic class is resumed after their brief theatrical turn as president. Obama pushed multiple times during his presidency to eliminate the carried interest loophole, which he condemned as a giveaway to the super rich. But did he really? Or was it just some performance? Closing the carried interest loophole so that fund managers' earnings would be taxed as ordinary income was a prominent feature in Obama's budget request to Congress as well as during public speeches and his re-election campaign. And I think that's what's significant is rhetorically it's effective. He didn't make it, did it? It didn't get done, did it? Was it ever meant to get done? In 2012, Obama even ran television advertisements criticising Mitt Romney for his use of the carried interest tax provision during Romney's career as a private equity executive. In the ad, the narrator claimed Romney used every trick in the book. Tax havens, offshore accounts, carried interest. 
Mitt Romney has used every trick in the book. In a way as well, though, like, I don't want to pay tax, do you? Do you trust the government? Do you like the government? Do you want to give them your money so they can go bomb some foreign land or do deals with medical health care providers that rip you off or weapons manufacturers? The morality around tax, for me, is out the window. I would like to pay tax directly to the community that I live in, to elective concerns and interests that you, through consensus, determine and vote on and allocate your tax is too. I don't trust them to decide it anymore. This is what happens when your government is completely bereft of all authority. Say in our country, oh, well, what about nurses? They're not paying nurses enough. What about teachers? They're not paying teachers enough. What about railroad workers? Anyone who's doing anything, anyone that you'll trot out during a pandemic to say, hey, come on, these people are heroes. When it comes to it, when it comes to paying them, you'd rather use the money to buy up your private data, to funnel into Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, to funnel into Big Pharma, to give themselves bonuses. You know how this stuff operates now, so there's no morality around taxes anymore. Asked whether the business arrangement violated the principles Obama professed to support as president, a spokesperson for Obama's office declined to comment. Because there's nothing you can say. Because the answer is, yes, of course it does. But those principles were meaningless because it was just a performance. Over the last seven years, the Obamas have accumulated a vast fortune through glitzy content production deals with Spotify, Netflix and Amazon. Book sales and speaking fees to banks and trade groups have also generated millions of dollars. Obama's newfound personal fortune has vaulted him into the upper echelons of American wealth. The Obama family is reportedly building several houses on a plot of beachfront Hawaiian property purchased by close friend Marty Nesbitt, the chief executive of Vistria Group, a Chicago-based private equity firm. How, then, can you spend any time engaging in the discourse about the differences between the various figures that occupy these apparent political movements? It's simply sort of a theatre troupe. It's just casting, really. Oh, this one's good. He's charismatic. Stick him out there for a while. He'll do all right. Then after Afterwards, he'll do what they always do. No one has got the tenacity, the personal moral fortitude to sort of step outside of it and operate with any conviction. And I feel that the system itself doesn't really afford it, that people are being filtered out, that relationships are being formed, people are getting funded by such nefarious individuals and such terrible institutions. But by the end of it, as you know, the, the phrase that Trump used, the swamp, the swamp has engulfed everybody. And indeed, the drain of the swamp is precisely what's been required or just leave the swamp and go somewhere else. When he first ran for presidency, Obama struck a populist tone, promising to close the revolving door in Washington of special interests and lobbyists and end unfair trade practices with China and hold business leaders accountable. The usual. Obama's presidency turned out to be a disappointment to many progressives who were frustrated by, among other things, his support for expanded international free trade deals after campaigning on renegotiating them. A bit like when Joe Biden said, make Saudi Arabia a pariah and then... And make them, in fact, the pariah that they are and and make them in fact the pariah that they are and and his administration's refusal to criminally prosecute major banks responsible for the 2008 crisis. Since leaving office, Obama has largely stopped populist economic arguments altogether. He's apparently more interested in the issue of alleged disinformation disseminated on social media. That's interesting, isn't it? Because there's a clear and obvious relationship between this new censorship industrial complex and the interests of the powerful. As long as they can maintain control over independent media, as long as they can ensure that mainstream media carries messaging that is beneficial to their agenda. They don't ever have to alter the unequal, unfair, corrupt systems that they build, participate in and exploit, even when rhetorically pretending that they oppose them. So when you have independent media like us, where we're willing to talk about these problems, convey this information, query whether or not former presidents should be operating in that way and what it reveals when they are, can be shut down. And the participants in projects such as these are smeared. That was the topic of Obama's speech at Stanford University in 2022. I want to speak about disinformation because that's the only thing I can speak about now because I'm so rich that anything else I mention is going to seem like hypocrisy. As well as the focus of the Obama Foundation's inaugural Democracy Forum Summit last November, Obama made no mention of the carried interest loophole or any tax justice issues during either public address. So when he was in a position where he could have but didn't do anything about it, he spoke about it. Now he's in a position to exploit it. He doesn't mention it. So I don't know, is that less hypocritical or...? The carried interest loophole has remained vexing for multiple administrations.
demonstrations. On at least one occasion, former President Donald Trump rallied against the loophole on the campaign trail, but he never invested significant energy in eliminating it. Huh. Sparing it in his far-reaching tax cut legislation in 2017 and creating a new path for high-income earners to avoid top income tax rates. President Joe Biden similarly promised to end the special tax treatment, but failed after fierce lobbying from the investment fund industry. Last year, as congressional negotiators hashed out the final stages of the Inflation Reduction Act, the loophole's closure appeared imminent. But last-minute lobbying blitz from the American Investment Council, which represents leading private equity and hedge funds, along with the pressure from the real estate industry, convinced Senator Kristen Sinema of Arizona, an independent who identified as a Democrat at the time, to kill the measure. I'm a Democrat. I'm an independent. What do I need to do to be paid? Just shut down this bill. Then I'm that. In the end, Biden signed the legislation without any change to the carried interest tax rule. Here is another story that shows us the necessity of remaining mentally frugal, objective, and clear-headed when it comes to dealing with political disinformation. Barack Obama, while in office, publicly spoke about this issue all the time, campaigned on that basis, passionately received standing ovations while wowing the American nation on the topic. But Barack Obama now, as of today, uses that legal tax loophole in order to profit while talking about, curiously, disinformation, misinformation, malinformation, which I believe are new categories that have been created to shut down the scent and to prevent issues like this one being publicly discussed so that the whole system can continue to maintain itself because the system's not going to destroy itself from within itself. It will be destroyed from outside it. That is why these new legislative barriers are being, even before our very eyes, formulated with the assistance of hypocrite Barack Obama. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Turn on the notification bell right now. And if you want a bit of a laugh, watch my comedy special, Brandemic. There's a link in the description. It's self-funded. It's uncensored. It's fantastic. You'll love it. More important than any of that is that you please stay free.